It's July, 1776. We're a small but scrappy colony of a large empire. We've just declared our independence and committed treason. We don't have a large military force. We aren't set up to fight a multi-front war. And we're trying to create new institutions based on radical ideas created by philosophers. So we've got our work cut out for us. It's important to see that all the theory in the world is not going to save the Americans from the very real consequences of their actions. The British, after all, didn't read the Declaration and say, well, they've got a good claim. They read it as a declaration of war. And the founders knew this. At the end of the Declaration, it reads, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. If the founders hadn't won, they would hang. As Benjamin Franklin quipped, we must all hang together, or assuredly, we will hang separately. But winning the war is just the first problem. Now that we're free of the English yoke, we have to set up a new government. Panic! How do we do this? We start with some Lockean principles. We know that all men are created equal, and that governments derive their just power from the consent of the governed. OK, that's a good starting point. But what does consent of the governed mean? According to a strict understanding of Lockean philosophy, every individual in the United States would have to say, I consent to the laws of the United States. Logistically, this is obviously very problematic, and even harder when you have the British knocking down your door. And this is where we see that the founders didn't rely exclusively on Lockean liberalism when they were setting things up. Whig theory comes back to play a role when they're trying to establish a stable and free government. For Whigs, people have to be connected to their government through a longer and older tradition. The founders tie these two theories together in order to create institutions that protect individual liberty without becoming so radically democratic that they threaten stability. They use these theories to tackle some of the most important questions of the day such as how powerful should the federal government be? How do you distribute the executive, legislative, and judicial powers? How do you prosecute this war? How do you pay collectively for this war? This is the great experiment that they initiated when they declared independence. It is not one they took lightly. It required great sacrifice, great statesmanship, and a consensus among the people that their cause was just. For that reason, it's important to reflect on the significance of this action, both within the United States and around the world. We decided we were not going to submit to a heavy-handed government. We look to philosophy to clarify our understanding of freedom and to understand how it is that we can build a new democratic constitutional order. Understanding the incredible character you have to have in order to embark on this task is very important. Understanding the incredible risks associated with revolution will help you see why it is they're so rare and so often unsuccessful. I hope you spend a little time thinking about how amazing it is that the founders declared that if people suffer under an oppressive rule, it is their right, their duty, to throw off that government. We should be alive to these concerns today as we continue to think through what it means to live in a free society and what we expect from our government. And if it happens to be that you're watching this around the 4th of July, I hope you think through these issues while enjoying hamburgers and fireworks. Thank you very much.